Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Increased Profitability with Aftermarket Platform Significant. My name is Carolina Haig, and I will be your host for today's event. And presenting today will be Martin from PDS and Rude from Significant. Now, a short introduction about us at PDS Vision. We are a global software solution provider, and we offer market-leading and cutting-edge solutions that enable our customers to realize their business value within product development, manufacturing, service, and operations. We at PDS Vision are considered the leading and trusted advisor within product development sectors. Amongst our customers, there is Atlas Copco, Vadista, Cargotech, and many more. But the bigger question is, why have they chosen to work with us? And the short answer is because we care. We care about our customers' challenges and how we can help them on their digitalization journey. And the fact that we also care about being a company that makes a difference. This is PDS Vision. We are sustainable, professional, and we have a passion for what we do. We seek to be sustainable as a partner, employer, and company to work with. We are passionate and professional throughout our value chain. And that is the short answer why customers choose to work with PDS Vision. But this webinar is also held and presented by our partner, Significant, who are experts in the aftermarket industry. Significant was funded in 2004, and they have been on a journey to offer the best solution for manufacturers and distributors to enable companies to improve their profitability by supporting their aftermarket and digital commerce strategy. Significant helps companies share aftermarket information hassle-free to many channels and provide machine unique aftermarket information at point of sales. They also optimize user experiences for multiple use cases and provide a one-stop web shop for spare parts, wear parts, accessories, and more. But now Martin and Ruud will take over the rest and explain more about the aftermarket strategy. Perfect. So uh, my name is Martin. Uh, I've been at PDS Vision for uh, approximately 17 years, uh, and I'm uh, focused on uh, the aftermarket suite of our um, software portfolio. So I work in the services department, implementing these types of uh, solutions. Uh, so the agenda for today, uh, I will go through some of the aftermarket challenges that we see uh, our customers facing today. I will then cover the purpose of um, uh, implementing a platform like Significant, the general process for authoring the information. Then I will move into the demo part of uh, the presentation and I will show you some customer examples uh, like Verdesta, Rototilt, and Edilog. And I have chosen to, to show you these uh, companies because they use completely different authoring methods, uh, but publishes uh, the information to, to significance. So Verdesta uses their PLM system, uh, Windchill, to author the catalog structures and part lists and uh, so on. Rototilt has stored or managed their information in their ERP system, M3, and Edilog authors uh, the entire content in, um, in the significant manager application. And then Rude will take over and uh, cover the business aspects and some possibilities uh, if you implement a uh, solution like this. And then, as um, we said before, we will end with a Q&A so you have the possibility of, of uh, and, or asking questions. So spare part sales and aftermarket in general is often a high margin business. The customers often want to buy from you and often need to buy from you, but it could become less profitable if it's not a streamlined process. So as you probably know, many companies today still communicate through telephone with the customers, sending emails back and forth. They look at CAD drawings to determine the correct spare parts uh, or traditional spare part manuals. They spend time determining if we have interpreted the customer correctly and they worry about sending the, the wrong spare parts. 
based on the communication with the, the customer um, and when the customer bought the product. Products are getting more and more complex, and this makes it even more difficult. Distribute up-to-date documentation to customers, to service providers, or internally. For instance, manuals and assembly instructions, service bulletins, and so on. And to be able to control what information is accessible to what users. And the risk is always that the customers may find other sources where they buy these spare parts and wear parts. So the purpose of implementing a web-based aftermarket platform like Significant is to, first of all, provide up-to-date information on the web for spare parts and for other types of documentation. To be able to control who has access to what information and let the customers or uh, consumers, if you will, search for the information and find the spare parts. To be able to filter the information so that only relevant spare parts are displayed for a specific serial number or a specific date. It should be easy to access through a web-based user interface. But we also allow offline capabilities if the product, for instance, is located where there's no internet connection. It should be easy to create and manage the information. And of course, one big purpose of this is to increase the aftermarket business, of course. So Significant is a platform that has an authoring tool, the Significant Manager, where you can create the information, but it is built from the ground up to be able to import information from different sources like PLM or ERP or a CAD application or Excel. Uh, the information is stored in a database, and then from there you can publish to different formats like PDF or the web or the offline viewer. I covered or I talked about different authoring methods, and I will cover one example here, which is the PLM process, where many of our customers use Windchill, their PLM system, to leverage an engineering bill of material and restructure that into a service bill material, creating the catalog navigation structure, creating part lists, kits, and defining what parts are sellable and so on. The SBOM is associative to the EBOM, so any changes made to the engineering bill material can easily be identified and the SBOM can be updated. Associative illustrations are created based on the SBOM and callouts and so on are added. And then uh, this information is automatically published every night to, uh, to the web, to Significant. So I will shortly move into the demonstration part of uh, the presentation and I will talk about Werderstad who, as I said, uses uh, Windchill to manage all the information from the uh, catalog structures to part lists to kits and uh, so on. Then we have Rototilt, uh, who has uh, defined their information in their ERP system. And then Edilog, who uh, stores the part lists and so on in Excel and creates the, the catalog structures and so on in, uh, in the significant manager application. So I thought that would be interesting for you to, to just to see that the information doesn't need to be in a particular system. It could be in, in basically any system that you have the information in. So I will start uh, from Verstop. So currently I'm not logged in to uh, Significant, but it's accessible to, uh, to anyone. And we can see the different product families. We can see uh, wear parts, which is, which is um, a major part of uh, uh, the Vedesta aftermarket business. We can see some branding material and so on. So if I log, I will actually go into the wear part section here just to, to show you that uh, here are the different categories of, of wear parts. These are applicable for the entire product portfolio. 
And if I go into the uh, crossboard times here, we can see that it's possible to add these to my shopping list, but it's not possible, of course, to place an order in this case. And I cannot see any prices, any availability and so on. But if I log in, and um, if I now go to wear parts, I will go into the same category here. We can now see that prices are fetched from the ERP system. I have my discount code based on my, um, my login. I have the, uh, the stock level and so on. And now we can see that my shopping list has been replaced by an order cart. So it's now possible to add these parts to my, my order. Some of these add to order buttons actually have a drop down list. And in this case, it's uh, because this part is included in a kit, which is defined in, in Windshield, the PLM system. So as soon as a part is included or added to a kit, this drop-down list will include all the kits that this part is, is included in. If I go into the details page of the part, we can see the kits or the kit in this case, and I can add that kit to my, my, um, my order card as well. If I scroll down, I can see where this part is um, uh, located, where it's applicable. So if I have, for instance, a Ferrex 700 machine, we can see that that is part of the wear parts uh, category of the product, but it's also included in a part list. And I can navigate to that part list directly from, from the search results here. The illustration is displayed and that part is expanded so I can add that to my, my cart. So if I go back to the welcome page here and navigate into the different um, product families. I will go into the Tyne Cultivator and uh, the Ferrex family, and then I have my Ferrex machine here. Of course, if I know that I have a Ferrex machine, I can search for that in the, um, uh, in the search field and navigate directly here. And of course, if I have a part number, uh, I can simply type that in and, and navigate to the parts here as well. So I'm going to go into the Ferrex 700 machine. The different categories here are also, of course, defined in, in Windchill. The wear parts is specific to this machine. Um, and then we have some service kits and the spare part catalog. So I will go into the spare part catalog where we have the system breakdown of the product. And again, this is defined in, in Windchill. I will... Uh, filter this list on the crossboard section here. And here we can see the overview of the crossboard module and then the sub levels here, the actual part list. And I can navigate to them by clicking the nodes here or clicking the call out and then clicking the, um, uh, the section in the, in the list. And then of course I can find my, my spare part here as, uh, as you saw before. I just want to show you what this looks like in Windshield real, real quick. So we're currently in uh, Windshield and I've navigated to a, um, uh, a part list that is divided into two separate part lists. And I will open this in a side-by-side -side view so you can see the E-BOM and the S-BOM, the engineering bill of material and the service bill of material. So Windchill will then open the uh, engineering bill of material on the left-hand side and the service bill of material on the right-hand side. And if we uh, wait a little bit for the visualization to load, we can see that we have the 3D visualization of the engineering bill of material, and we have the 3D visualization of the service bill of material. And if I would click a part here, it's located in the BOM. And based on this part here, for instance, I can identify where that is located 
on the ebon side so when i'm creating my service bill of material i consume parts from left to right defining where it should be located and i can also view what parts have not yet been consumed in the in, in the service bill of material so here we can easily see that these decals has not yet been been consumed and i can simply drag and drop those over to the part list where i want to include it in the part will then disappear from the engineering bill of material because now it's included and it will pop up on the service bill of material and then i can decide is this part actually a spare part or not so the part list here will geometrically include all the parts but then i can take the spare part decision and say that these parts are the actual spare parts and those are the parts that will show up in in significant we would then create a an illustration based on these uh, these part list here and these are the ones that will actually show up here with the reference to to the parts listed in the in the part lists some of these parts may be difficult to uh, to identify if they're missing so if they're uh, particularly small so it's possible to compare the engineering bill of material to the service bill of material and then i can identify that this bolt here which is located here it's currently missing from from the in the s bone and then i can copy and paste that into my my service bill of material and every night windshield will identify any changes to to um, these part list and parts and uh, and so on and automatically publish that to to the web so the next example is Rototilt, and they have a similar uh, layout it looks a little bit different but we have the different um, categories of, uh, of products and we can navigate to a catalog or search for that in the same way as we did for for uh, for Vaderstad. but Rototilt has uh, in the past defined all of these part lists and so on in their ERP system and we have published that to to significant so the authoring process is quite different from from Vaderstad, but the end result is of course the uh, the same uh, if I go back here and go into the technical support uh, node here, we can see that currently, since I'm not logged in, I can only uh, download the team viewer application so they can help you with uh, with support and so on. But if I would log in and then go into technical support again, we can see that now based on my um, user and the the um, uh, the permissions that my user has, I can view assembly instructions and so on. And currently I'm viewing the information in Swedish. If I go back here to uh, technical support and switch to English instead, we can see that now it says assembly instructions and uh, and so on. And then I can view the the um, the documents in uh, in significant also the documents uh, if they're in pdf or html they will also be available in the the language that i select here uh, rototilt also has service bulletins or technical updates so users can subscribe to updates and these will be stored in your your notifications here so you can have easy access to uh, to updates and so on the last example that i want to show you before i let um, rude uh, go in here is uh, edilog that develops uh, electrical forklifts and they uh, invested in significant I think they had sold two forklifts when they took this decision and they felt that eventually we need to go down this road we need to implement some sort of of um, uh, aftermarket platform so 
instead of waiting for that, they decided to to do that. Um, uh, yeah, in the beginning, basically. So, Vädersta uh, and Rototilt are open applications, so it's possible to to view it without any um, uh, user login. Edilog, however, uh, you need to you need to have a login to be able to access this site. So that is also a configuration that you that you have in in uh, in significant. So as you can see, the the content is sort of similar to Vädersdag and um, and Rototilt. Uh, the categories of a product for Edilog is spare parts, documentation, and they also have some downloadable software and so on. But you can see that we have the um, uh, the uh, the spare parts uh, list, and we can go into the different um, categories and so on. And this is all defined in the um, uh, in the significant manager application. The part lists they have defined in Excel. So if you have existing spare parts um, lists uh, or spare part catalog that you that you have, we can simply import that. Uh, so the process of actually getting it on the web is quite easy. In regards to documentation, uh, if we go here, if we go into the documentation part, they previously had their driver's manual in uh, on their existing web site. So instead of storing that in significant, we actually just link to their their existing um, uh, web page where you can we can view the um, uh, the manual. Some of the documents are stored in in significant in the same way as for Rototilt, for instance. So you can view it here as well. Of course, this information is also searchable, and it's possible to have index search. So you can search within the the uh, PDF documents or HTML documents. So, with that said, Rude, uh, I will leave it over to uh, to you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you see my screen. This is where Martin ended his uh, his story. My name is Ruud de Bruyke. I work for Significant as Vice President of Product Development. And I saw an, uh, a question from Douglas in, in the list that uh, are you going to show some new functionality? And I think I have some new functionality here also uh, to show. So just hang on. Um, yes. So Martin perfectly well explained what you see here on the left hand of the screen, and that is uh, how to take data, how to take all your technical data information about your products, centralize, unify them, and then publish them. Uh, so that you have that, you can provide that information at the hands of your customers, users, service technicians, and so on. But it doesn't stop there. So Significant has uh, added integrations to ERP systems, uh, to IoT systems, to, to, to case management systems. And in that sense, we are not only a web-based aftermarket portal, we are really a business portal. We can help you to increase the sales of your aftermarket products, of your services, and also your new product sales by taking very well hand on, on uh, after your customers and uh, for instance if they have a case uh, a warranty to handle that perfectly well so and everything is based on this data that is in the significant database and that is taken into it in by different means as martin has explained but in the end as you also saw, it always looks the same and we can uh, treat it the same in our business processes. So what we will see is what we see is uh, what we already have seen is that you can uh, provide information about different types of uh, merchandise. You can sell spare parts, but also the wear parts, accessories and tools. And the big advantage of you as an OEM is that you know exactly what parts belong to what machine. Replacements. 
Uh, service kits and global kits, what's the difference? Uh, well, that's because you have this deep knowledge about your product. You know that if somebody wants to buy this screw, I don't want to sell a single screw. Uh, but I'm in this particular machine, I'm in the carrier 5000. So I want to see service kits for this machine that include this screw. And then maybe I want to also sell a 500 pack uh, of these screws. So when I on this machine and I click on this screw, I want to see both the content, context sensitive uh, service kits and the global kits. Cross sales, uh, when I'm looking at one product, uh, you want to say, well, you probably need also this tool and, and show that. I want to save my favorites. I want to be able to reorder um, I want to see the stock levels. I want to know when it is available if it's not in stock. So all this together gives you the uh, enormous uh, power to sell more. You also want to uh, empower your service people. When they go to a specific site, they want to see the machines on that site. Also, as a customer, I want to see my machine. So we need an integration with an ERP, uh, with a CRM system. Uh, like Salesforce or, or, or Microsoft or whatever uh, uh, CRM system and know what machines are on the specific site. We may want to hook into the live data with an IoT integration. Uh, PTC has ThingWorks. Uh, we have done uh, implementations together with ThingWorks. You want, of course, to provide them documentation, instructions. You also the good thing, what we have seen is that you can take from an engineering bill of material to a service bill of material as manufactured. But insignificant, it is possible to look at the machine as manufactured, but it's also possible to upload service reports and it's even possible to change the machine card when you make replacements so that you get an as maintained view of your machines. And in the end, this allows you to provide different kind of business contracts, to have a, a performance-based business contracts or a pay-per-use contract, uh, to offer preventive maintenance uh, by combination of, of, of an IoT integration and all the information you have on, on the machine. You, you, you can go and call them or send, send an email, or next time they are in the significant portal, you can have a big... Um, question mark that says click here and then when they click there you say well it's time for preventive maintenance of this machine uh, finally and this is also an area which is is very new uh, for us is uh, we have had integrations with ticketing systems but this is a, a complete new module in the significant uh, aftermarket portal for case management to be able to create cases, not only for feedback and support, but also for warranty issues and returns. And you can link it to a product. Uh, you can link it to a serial number. You can link it to a part, an order, um, and, and, and link it to service engagement. And in the end, maybe also link it to new product sales when it turns out that, okay, this, this machine isn't repairable anymore. So let's look at some uh, examples. So I just start with a common customer of PDS and Significant, Atlas Copco, where we, uh, as said, can provide uh, from the technical information, also they use Windchill, for, for, so directly from Windchill in the Significant portal, they can show different types of information, like the spare parts, accessories, and the tools, and the documentation. The same as for Werderstadt, as, as Martin already have said. So this is still sharing information. Next step is to make it easy for them to, to, to order so that they won't go to class also and, and, and buy it there. So directly from the exploded view. So this is something you cannot do in a normal web shop where you don't have uh, access to all this en engineering data. You can start drilling down in your machine, and finally find the exploded view with service parts with spare parts, you click on them, you see your specific price, you see if the, if the part is, is replaced or not, and you can put it, add it to your order. And this is a standard module. It, it, it integrates with an ERP system, but it has been integ integrated or implemented by 
most of our customers. Uh, so, so this is not a, a, a very complex step to, to take. I talked about these, uh, these kits. So here's an example. If I click on this screw number three in, 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 in the uh, image, uh, I see that my add to order button, it's not a normal button. There's a little carrot there. And if I click on it, it tell, tells me that, okay, you cannot buy this screw, but you can buy uh, a service kit, a small part kit or a valve housing complete, or I can uh, buy another kit. Um, then I can click on, on this link item uh, icon and, and look what's in this kit. Is that the one that I'm actually looking for? And then you get, of course, the correct documentation for it. Other th interesting things you can do and which only you can do because you know your machine so well is let's say um, a, a part is not for sale and it will not be for a long time and you are out there on the field farming and you want it and you have a green machine but just because you want to go on with farming you don't care if this part is, is red then uh, we can show uh, part options. And you can easily manage that again in the significant database. You can manage it by specifically telling these parts are optional for each other, or you can use uh, a, a regular expressions and say all parts that start with this number um, series, they are actually optional. It's just color that changes. So you can, can handle this very efficiently and give this customer anyway the possibility to buy the part that uh, it needs. Presentation is very important. Present not only uh, the technical information, but also the, the descriptions and uh, the prices, but also where is this used to be 100% certain that it is the correct part. And this can be styled in, 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 uh, in the way that, that, that you like and provide uh, specifications uh, for, for height and width and so on. And do that in a way that you're used to when you're buying as a, as a, as a consumer from an, uh, a website. You want it to, to look nice, you want it to give the information that should be on the right part. So the significant uh, platform, we have worked a lot on uh, the layout and the profiling. Here you can see, example of uh, your spe specific price based on who is logged in you get your discount you can see um, how much is in stock well it's hard to see here but it says three pieces in stock but the other one the right one is not in stock and then if you click on this triangle we run this uh, available to promise and we um, uh, we make sure that uh, we, we, we check when it is available again which is in this case the 26th of May. So everything to make sure that the customer or the service person sticks with you and buys from you and uh, yeah, and you have more sales. Creating favorites, favorite products, favorite documentation, favorite parts, creating lists. This is also a relatively new functionality in the significant uh, platform. Uh, reordering from, from uh, older uh, orders. So when you are coming to the first page, page, we can show you your recent orders. We can show you your favorites in a nice way. You can click on an, an, an older order and read order it completely or parts of it. Uh, you can take a list in your favorites and, and move it automatically to your, um, to your shopping basket. So more and more, features that you are used to from a B2C uh, shopping area, we have now implemented in what is mostly used as a B2B uh, portal, the, the significant portal. Uh, Cross-selling, uh, featured parts, um, all this is, is, is now implemented and can be managed in the significant uh, backend. Uh, the ERP integration also allows you to look at, at older orders. Uh, so this is when you invoice your customers, which is currently 99% of, of our customers custom, invoice their customers. But we have recently, and this is also a new uh, development, included an in integration with a payment uh, providers, uh, AdGen and Stripe, so that you basically can take, uh, for instance, send out a service 
person in a car to a customer and have that service uh, engineer uh, ask the, the, the end user to, to, to pay with credit card or Swish or any other type of payment that uh, would, would be nice, Apple Pay or whatever. They, they, these platforms, they support an enormous amount of uh, payment options. I talked about um, providing the um, the the, the uh, uh, service technician or the customer the possibility to see. I'm sorry that this is in Swedish. Uh, well, 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 din product uh, means my machines. Uh, the possibility to show their machines, and this is from a research European research project that PDS and significant had together with. Uh, four or five universities and four or five companies in Europe about a, a service business ba service based business model uh, and in this case paper use washing machines where we also use the thingworks IOT platform to uh, not only see what are my machines but also be able to go down into one machine and get a lot of information about it and show it in the portal and can use that for, for instance, uh, advice on specific uh, changes. And it could be that you send a, uh, a package to the user who has a paper use. Maybe you don't even need to send the service technician because, for instance, in the Scandinavian countries, they are very expensive. You send a package with uh, a ring that needs to be replaced, you send uh, a link uh, to uh, somewhere on, in the significant platform with a video of how to do that and the customer can do it themselves and um, uh, you save a lot of money for both the customer and the company and for uh, the environment and you can use the washing machine a little bit longer. Um, then we have this integration with serial numbers, with a CRM system. We have a customer order who creates everything that you can put in front of a tractor and where you can um, uh, search for a serial number and you will see a specific machine. And if you go into that specific machine, you will get a link to one or more catalogs that are the right catalogs for that machine or in this case, the, the front loader. And um, because there might be hundreds of catalogs and you need to write the correct one, you get a lot of information about this specific machine and also when it has been produced. Um, so here you can you have a page for the specific machine where you can upload uh, service reports and, and, and keep an eye on what's happening with this machine. Uh, it's relatively new. I think it's two or two years old. Is this uh, two and a half trip map? Time flies, maybe three years, but it's also relatively new uh, functionality. This is uh, the latest uh, addition to our uh, functionality, and that is the case module, where you can create cases, um, support cases, warranty cases, return cases, based on a product, a part, an order, uh, a serial number, and uh, manage that, manage the process of, of approving a warranty order, uh, sending the, uh, the replacements, sending uh, the instructions and things like that. So, and then uh, just like you can see your orders and your machines, you can then see in the significant portal your cases. So it's really going to be the one-stop aftermarket portal for all your needs, basically. So, yeah, so, so it's not only about uh, having all this great technical information and sharing it to your customers and your service technicians, but really use that also to uh, increase your sales. That's, that's what uh, PDS and Significant together want to provide to you. And I go back to Carolina. Yes, so we have some questions now. And I will shoot the first question. How can I prevent my customers from buying spare parts from third party vendors? Okay, I think that would be on my desk. Um, yes, uh, I think there's a lot there. First of all, uh, it, it's by uh, the trust you have as the OEM of the, of the machine 
that you have the information and you have it well structured and and that you make sure that you always have the right part for the right machine at the right time. But also um, like having an aftermarket portal like significant and we have integrations with Google search and so on, making sure that you turn up high on the top. And if someone clicks on there, that they also get the information they want. I, I showed this interesting uh, part page that, that you give uh, some extra information, not only technical abbreviations, because I have seen uh, companies where, uh, as an example, on Class also, I, I had a much better experience than on, on the company's page. And I actually ended up uh, buying there. So it's about having the right uh, information, making it easy to find it, making it easy to order, um, and they will get back to you. Great. And the next question is, what is the benefit of using a PLM system to manage the information compared to ERP or authoring in Significant? Maybe that's a question for me, I would say. So uh, I think the, the, the important thing is the end result, right? To, to be able to, to do what, uh, what I and uh, Ruth have, uh, have showed you now. But we, uh, as a PLM provider as well, what we uh, talk about a lot is the uh, so-called digital thread. So keeping that digital thread from the engineering department to the manufacturing, to service and so on, and never cutting that sort of link to the source of the information. Uh, as soon as you uh, export it to Excel or uh, manually enter part numbers in the ERP and so on, you cut that digital thread. And what we try to achieve is, is never doing that, basically, from part numbers to structures to geometry, 3D uh, geometry and so on. Uh, and that process is, is a lot uh, more streamlined, I would say. Hopefully that answers the question. I think it does. And we have one last question. What new trends do you see among your customers apart from e-commerce? Yeah, so, so e-commerce is of course big. Uh, and we also talked about uh, this, this um, um, IoT and, and connect to, to machines uh, and, and, and warranty and case management. But I see a, a larger trend, which actually would move away a little bit from e-commerce, are these new, new business models of uh, uh, like providing functionality, providing uh, a performance instead of a machine where the OEM takes the responsibility for the service and where there much, will be much more internal uh, uh, sales of, of parts and so on. And, uh, but, but it requires that you have a platform like Windchill and Significant and, and, and uh, maybe ThingWorks so that you can have, uh, uh, have an overview of the machine you have and provide a pay-per-use uh, functionality for it. Well, great. Thank you so much, you guys, for this amazing presentation. Thank you, Rude, and thank you, Martin. And thank you, everybody who participated today. And we will see you soon on the next webinar. So have a great day now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.